Another method that we can use to find the solution to simultaneous equations is the process of elimination, where the main goal of it is to eliminate one of the variables that exist between our equations. In this case, we've got the variables of x and y. So we're trying to eliminate one of them by combining these equations. Now, to use the process of elimination, what we've got to do is we've either got to add these equations together or subtract one of the equations from the other. So how do you decide what to do? Well, the first thing that we have to do is actually look at the coefficient to the pronumerals that we've got. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a coefficient that matches. So either the coefficient of the x, which in this case, the coefficient is 4 and 1, they don't match, or the coefficient of the y's. In this case, we've got positive 3 and negative 3, so we've got a match. Now, if we've got a match, we look at the sign in front. If the sign's the same, we need to subtract them. If the signs are different, we need to add them together. So help us refer to this, I'm going to call the top equation, equation 1, and the second equation, equation 2. Because the signs of our coefficient are different, we need to add the equations together. So equation 1, add equation 2. Now, we can actually think of this like a little long addition sort of problem, where we add the coefficients of our x terms. So 4 plus 1 will be 5 lots of x. We add the coefficients of our y's terms, so plus 3, subtract 3, will be 0y, so that's eliminated. And we add the numbers here on the right, so this 2 plus 8, which will equal 10. And what we've been successful in doing is eliminating the y value. So now we can solve for x. We've got 5x equals 10, so if we divide both sides by 5, we find that the x value must equal 2. But remember, we're trying to find the solution of both the x value and the y value. So to find now the solution of the y value, we need to substitute the x equals 2 into one of these equations. In this case, I'm going to substitute x equals 2 into equation 2. Now equation 2 is x subtract 3y equals 8. So my x value will be 2, so it will be 2 subtract 3y equals 8. Now I solve for y, so I subtract 2 from both sides, so negative 3y will equal 6. And now I solve for y, so I divide by negative 3 on both sides, therefore my y value must be negative 2. So I'm proposing our solution here will be x equals 2 and y equals negative 2. That's the point where these two lines intersect. But the advantage of this is we can also perform a check step where we substitute our x and y values into each equation and make sure that it balances. So equation 1, the 4x plus 3y equals 2. So 4 times our x value of 2 plus 3 times our y value of negative 2 should equal 2. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, should equal 2. 8 plus negative 6 will equal 2, so our equation balances and works for equation 1. But we need to check to make sure it works for equation 2. So equation 2 is x subtract 3y should equal 8, where proposing our x value should be 2, Subtract 3, lots of our y value, of negative 2, and it should equal 8. Uh, we've got our 2, subtract, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, which should equal 8. 2, subtract negative 6 is 8, so it all balances, and we've found a solution where it works for both equation 1 and equation 2. That solution being x equals 2, and y equals negative 2. So now we've had a look at solving simultaneous equations through elimination, let's take a little look at our original cycling puzzle and see how we can use the elimination method to find the correct solution to that. So here is our two equations that we found from our cycling puzzle in an earlier video. 
What I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this first one equation 1 and the second one equation 2 so we can refer to these. Now our first step of elimination is to work out which one of these variables has the same coefficient. Is our coefficient of x or our coefficient of y? But what we'll immediately notice is we've got a problem. None of these variables match. So what we need to do is one extra step. We need to multiply either one or both of these equations until we have a matching variable. In this case, if I multiply equation one by two, what they'll do is give me a two x here, which will match with that two x. But remember, if I multiply one value by two, to keep the equation balanced, I've got to multiply everything by two. So I've got 2 times my x, which is 2x, plus 2 times my y, which is 2y, which will be equal to 2 times my 11, which is 22. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to call this equation 3. So our next step is to look at where do we have a matching coefficient. In this case, it's the 2x, and the sign in front of them are both positive. When they're both positive, it means we need to subtract one from the other. So in this case, I'm going to take the equation two and subtract equation three from it. So I've got them lined up. So two x, subtract two x, will eliminate the x's, they're gone. But three y, subtract our positive two y, will be one y, or just y, which will be equal to 25, subtract 22, which is three. Therefore, our y value we're proposing is equal to 3. But we need to find out what our x value is. So we do that by substituting our y equals 3 into one of these equations up here. I'm going to substitute into equation 1. So when I do that, wherever I've got my y, I replace it with 3, or substitute. So x plus y, which is plus my y value of 3, should equal 11. Now I'll solve for x by subtracting 3 from both sides, so therefore my x value should equal 8. But remember, the advantage of this sort of method is we can check our solution, so let's do that. To check it, we need to substitute our x equals 8 and our y equals 3 into both equations and make sure both balance. So into equation 1 of x plus y equals 11. Our x value, we're saying is 8, plus our y value of 3 should equal 11. 8 plus 3 does equal 11, so it balances on the first equation. But we need to make sure it balances on the second. So the second equation, we've got 2x plus 3y equals 25. 2 times our x value of 8 plus 3... 3 times our y value of 3 should equal 25. 2 times our x, or 2 times our 8, is 16. Plus 3 times 3 is 9, should equal 25. 16 plus 9 does equal 25. So, we've found a solution that balances to both equations. Now, we interpret that solution back into the problem. Our x is representing the number of bicycles and our y is representing the number of tricycles. So therefore, in the display window, there are eight bicycles and three tricycles. Now, if you've been following along these videos, you'll know that we've already found that solution to be correct. But what are the advantages of elimination? I find elimination to be like a neat little trick. It has its purposes under the right circumstances. The big advantage of it is it's still going to find very accurate solutions to really complex problems. Problems that we can't solve graphically or get an accurate solution graphically or by using trial and error. But while I don't find it to be quite as robust as substitution, under the right circumstances where you can quickly find something that you can eliminate, it can be much more efficient than substitution. Now, there are a couple of important things to remember when using elimination. The first thing is you can choose to eliminate either the x value or the y value, or whatever variables you're using, until you've got one variable remaining. It doesn't matter which one that you choose to eliminate. 
And the second thing to remember is this. To eliminate, you can either add these equations together or you can subtract them. Which one you use depends on what sort of coefficients you've got. If the symbol, the sign in front of the coefficient is the same, you should subtract them. If the symbol in front of the coefficients are different, you should add them.